Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished leader from the UK, Victoria Doxat. Victoria, welcome to the show. Oh, hi, Ashutosh. Thank you for having me. It's great yeah. to be here. Uh, Victoria is a thought leadership consultant and an executive ghostwriter. She's the founder of the Global Institute for Thought Leadership. Uh, And of course, you're an author as well. But uh, Victoria, let's start about uh, your journey as a thought leadership consultant. For my viewers and listeners, what is thought leadership in simple terms? It's a really good question. And I think the term thought leadership, it kind of sounds a bit pretentious sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, And I prefer to think of it as business philosophy. So in my background, I'm actually a philosophy lecturer and I've taught Mm -hmm. philosophy Um, for over 15 years uh, in the UK colleges Um, and so when I transferred into communications and marketing which is what I do now I had that kind of philosophical background and that's what I think thought leadership is it's business philosophy so it's leaders business owners entrepreneurs um, really thinking about their purpose really thinking about their vision Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. I help them to express that through content through written content so a lot of it is to do with strategy Um, a lot of it is trying to uncover their purpose and their aims and their goals Mm -hmm. and then through content we elevate their visibility and share their insights with the world that's great I love it it's really really interesting I I can imagine but tell me you know everybody I speak to these days seems to say I want to become a thought leader and you're a thought leadership guru what is the process that you follow to be, uh, to encourage people to become thought leaders? Um, so a lot of it is to do with confidence. So I work with a lot of entrepreneurs who are incredible business minds. So they've, mm-hmm. uh, they've, they've run startups. I work with a lot of startups. Um, so they have really good kind of groundbreaking or um, very visionary ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though they have that, sometimes they lack the confidence to share those insights. So a lot of it is actually making them aware that there mm. is an audience for mm. what they are doing mm. um, and to help them connect with that audience by producing engaging content. So I think everybody in a way has got this business philosophy. Any kind of business owner has got a philosophy or a vision, mm. but it's uh, encouraging them to share that more widely. Um, and once they do that, they start to reap the, reap the dividends of that, reap the rewards. And and could you give me an example of uh, someone you worked with without any names, of course, mm-hmm. on how you helped them develop their thought leadership uh, position? Yeah, sure. So I work with a publisher called We Think Press. So I, mm-hmm. I ghostwrite and help uh, entrepreneurs plan, write and publish their business books through the publisher. Um, and a lot of the time I get authors for the first, so first time authors. So they have a successful business, Mm -hmm. but um, it's a case of kind of drilling down into their audience and sharing their insights. Mm -hmm. And we do this by basically talking, by communicating their goals. um, And then we we kind of establish what their authority is. Mm -hmm. And then by using case studies, by using their own personal experiences, Mm -hmm. we kind of um, package that up so that they have a book that they can then use to share their thought leadership with the rest of the world. Amazing. You're also the founder of the Global Institute for Thought Leadership. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about this institute. Yeah, so I'm one of the founders. There's quite a few of us involved. Um, and it started off with a webinar um, that was, um, that took, it kind of started off before COVID. And then when the pandemic hit, everything stopped so a lot Mm -hmm. of the people in the group were authors or speakers or consultants and a lot of their work involved traveling Mm -hmm. and face-to-face networking or going into organizations and obviously that all stopped overnight um so we had a lot of very important influential visionary people um who were grounded (laughs) so we decided that we were going to get together and kind of start something that would extend our thought leadership and help other organizations and perhaps mm-hmm. look forward to the future of work mm-hmm. so we set up this platform called the global institute for thought leadership mm-hmm. um, and there are lots and lots of different people from all over the world involved in it and we basically it's a platform for people to come to us and we assist them with their business strategy or business ideas mm-hmm. or you can it's kind of like a dating service for business i guess someone will come to us and say look i've got this 
um, issue. I'm not too clear on my branding. And then we'll set them up with a branding strategist mm. who will then talk them through those ideas. Mm. So it's kind of it kind of came about quite organically. And then from that, we've written a book together. So we've got um, a book called Winning the War for Talent. Mm. Um, and 11 of us have contributed to that book and had it published. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just really a, a, a kind of a networking platform, I guess. Um, so it's worth checking out if you're interested in thought leadership and you're looking for the next big idea, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a good place to come in and have a chat. You know, we've done a couple of conferences as well, uh, which were well attended. Yeah. So, yeah. Very interesting. And you have got a panel of specialists uh, who engage with uh, people who want to discuss what their strategies are or plans are. Yeah, so I work in content writing. That's my kind of area. So there are mm. other consultants who work in kind of equality and diversity mm. or health and well-being mm. or um, any, any kind of business-related area, I guess. Mm. We've got someone who can help with that. Um, and my role really is to help with their content strategy and their thought leadership content strategy. So I talk to them about white papers mm. um, or um, books as well if they want to discuss books. Fantastic. So let's now move on and talk to uh, you about uh, your uh, other skill or your specialist specialism of being a ghostwriter or an author. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my viewers and listeners, help us understand what does a ghostwriter do? Okay, so a ghostwriter is, um, they basically write the book for the author, basically. Okay. So when I ghostwrite a book through the publisher, Mm-hmm. Um, I will speak with the author. I will understand their positioning. I will understand their target audience and the mm-hmm. goals they have for their book. Mm-hmm. And then through a series of interviews, I will meet with the author and mm-hmm. we'll discuss the content for each chapter. Mm-hmm. And then I will write that content up. So I don't, there's nothing of me in the book. Mm-hmm. The views, the content, the ideas, the case studies, everything comes from the author. Mm-hmm. It's my job just to make that um, readable, I guess, okay. to edit mm-hmm. it, to make sure that it's concise. Um, and that it fits into a structure of a book. Mm. And then once that book is finished, like my name will not be on it anywhere. You know, sometimes I get an acknowledgement, which is always nice, but there's nothing linking me to that book at all. Um, mm. The author will then go off and, and publish that and use it for their own aims. It's a really good way mm. for entrepreneurs mm. to get their books out because entrepreneurs are generally very busy people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to pass the writing process, which is the most like, time-consuming part, onto somebody else who's a professional and knows what they're doing, Mm. saves a lot of time for them and they get a product in a much um, smaller time scale mm. which they can then use to generate leads for their business well i know a lot of entrepreneurs who would love to write uh, their books so for uh, me to understand and for our viewers to understand what is the process that you follow you sit down with the entrepreneur and go through lengthy discussions yeah, so we do a we we do a book planning service. So I'll sit down with the author or author. Sometimes there's co-authors, um, and in it's, it takes a day. So it's a long, intensive day process. Sometimes we do it on Zoom, but we used to do it face to face. And we will basically plan the whole book for them, so they will know exactly how the book is going to be structured. We look at the case studies they're going to use. We look at their personal stories that they want to involve uh, get involved with, mm. um, and then from that they will have a content plan. And then we will have interviews for each chapter Mm. where we talk through the content for that chapter and then I write it up. And then at the end of the process, when they've got kind of 10 to 15 chapters of good content, Mm. they will then go away, look at the manuscript and then any edits I will take care of. Mm. Um, And then it will go into the publishing phase. Um, And then it will be assigned a copy editor, book cover design, all the rest of it, and then it will be published. And one of the biggest... easy process, sorry. No, that's that's one of the the biggest problems every... um, manuscript seems to face is to find a good publisher do you also Mm -hmm. help that yeah so I work with a publisher called Rethink Press which is the biggest um, publisher for business books Mm -hmm. in fact we had the business book of the year awards last night in London which was brilliant it's very a black tie very swanky Mm -hmm. Um, and that was great because you get to see a lot of the authors and the other publishers Um, but there there are lots of different ways you can publish so Rethink Press is a hybrid publisher which Mm -hmm. means that the author uh, pays for the service, the ghostwriting service or the publishing service, mm. and then they will get copies of their book. They will be helped with the publicity of the book, the PR, mm. um, and getting it into the Amazon um, uh, bestseller categories as well. We'll help them with all of that. Mm. Um, or you could go with a traditional publisher, which is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like I guess if you were a, a fictional author, probably more mm. likely, yep. where you yeah. will get paid um, 
a fee for writing a book, mm. but then you don't get as many royalties. So with hybrid publishing, you get to keep all the royalties. Mm. With traditional publishing, you lose most of the royalties. You you might you would never get an advance. You know, unless you're J.K. Rowling, you you it's very unlikely you would get an advance. Um, but you would get paid for the for the manuscript. Mm. Um, or you can do it yourself. So you can. There are lots of copy editors out there. There are lots of ghostwriters like me who work independently. Mm. Um, and if you want to manage that whole process yourself, you can do it. You will save a lot of money by doing that. But it's kind of like building a house. You know, you you kind of project managing all their different contractors and time scales and working with mm. professionals in an industry that you're not familiar with. And if it's your mm. first book. Mm you very you don't often get something that's as good as it could be if you went with either a traditional or a hybrid mm. but yeah there are lots lots of different pathways to it yeah in fact i've always told a lot of first time authors that uh, don't write to make money write only because you want to leave a legacy and if the book happens mm. to make money good luck to you yeah absolutely and because i work with business books so i don't do fiction mm. with business books um you know if if you think you're going to make money out of your business book you know unless you're Simon Sinek it's it's just not going to happen i think most authors would break even so the money they put into the book they will get back mm. um but it's more about the long term thought leadership mm. um you know brand estab- establishment of your brand authority and your brand visibility mm. and the leads that it would generate for your business mm. so your book might generate 100 grand's worth of business for you so it's a sunk cost Correct. um and that's the same with any thought leadership it's mm. it's, it's a long term strategy and you have to invest in order to then reap the rewards later on mm. and a book's no different well said well said. uh victoria you also enjoy writing white papers i was when i was reading about you you said that um how is this uh, different from writing a book you know i'm one of these strange people who absolutely love white papers and mm. love writing long form copy and the difference is because with a book it's nothing of me in there so the book is absolutely authored by the author mm. it's all of their ideas it's all of their research all i do is basically edit it into a format that is publishable that's all i do mm. i kind of steer them and i give them advice and i talk to them about their goals and stuff but it, but everything from from the author is in the book it's nothing of me in there mm-hmm. um with a white paper is very different because i work with corporates generally corporates um and so i will do all the research myself i will put together a, a strategy for them i'll do the planning of that so there's a lot of thought it's an intellectual exercise um and i love that because okay. the book writing is more of a practical ac- exercise mm-hmm. whereas the white paper thought leadership um is really about um understanding the philosophy and then pitching that in the right way that's going to generate leads and i yeah i love i love my white paper work mm-hmm. really enjoy doing it and also because i work with corporates um and a lot of global brands the the level that i'm writing at is is you know everything has to be absolutely perfect so there's a little bit of pressure there as well which i really yeah. enjoy Correct. um I like, i like working with that kind of you know all the all eyes are on you you better be you better be good i love that correct and writing a white paper for a corporate probably requires some very deep research yeah it does yeah yeah i mean a lot of the time they will give me a lot of research so they'll give me um that they usually provide me with case studies or transcripts of mm. conversations with their clients or sometimes mm. i have to interview their clients themselves mm. uh, sometimes it involves carrying out surveys with um clients or prospects um a lot of market research mm. um a lot of the time they'll give me uh, the research so mm. i have pages and pages and pages of facts and figures and data to, to kind of trawl through and make sense out of mm. um or sometimes they'll just point me in the direction of the places they want me to go and find the research and i'll mm. i'll do that research myself Mm. um but yeah i like I, i think it's because i've got a philosophical background so i i'm an academic background i like mm. teaching um and i like learning and with a white paper you know i might be working for a construction consultancy mm. or i might be working for you know a global sports brand or whatever mm. but it's very different i learn different things from each each approach and mm. it helps build my skills and keeps it interesting mm. so um yeah it's something i really enjoy doing Yeah and and a white paper does it does it get published in multiple copies across and it does it also probably goes out into uh, the public domain doesn't it Yeah absolutely yeah it should do yeah it should be I mean a white paper is an extensive piece of work, of research it's a, it's a, it's a high time it's ty- it's high cost in time and and financial and, and commitment you know mm-hmm. so it's a big piece of content 
Mm. Um, and so, yes, it would absolutely be published and shared with uh, B2B normally, um, mm. sometimes B2C. Um, and then from that white paper, because you've kind of got 10, 10 to 12 pages, I guess, once it's designed of really mm. good insights, really good industry insights, um, mm. you can then break that down into blog articles and uh, uh, other forms of content, ebooks. Uh, to get to maximise the impact and the reach of that uh, of that piece of paper, uh, that piece of research. Um, so yeah, you get a lot of bang for your buck with a white paper, but it is you know they are time consuming to write and they they involve a lot of uh, research. Mm. And for a prolific writer like you, between ghostwriting someone's entrepreneurial journey and white papers, do you ever face writer's block? Nope. <laughs> I can't afford to. <laughs> I don't have I don't have the um the luxury of writer's block. So oh. I'm um I'm very good with my deadlines. So I'll always oh. give myself a realistic deadline because I can't rush anything. Nothing can be rushed when you're working at high high level with high profile individuals, whether they're entrepreneurs or, or corporates. Oh. Um and yeah, no, I can't I just have to write because I can't not, <laughs> I can't not say, no, I don't have the luxury of writer's block. I can't just kind of say, all oh, right, I'm not going to do this today. Because there's an author at the end of the phone who wants their draft, you know. Fair enough, I agree. I, know. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, so my next question to you, Victoria, is, you know, and this again for a lot of young people who will be listening to our conversation, how does a first-time author find a publisher? Gosh, well, I mean, Google's your friend, really, isn't it? I mean, you can, I guess with publishers, you want to make sure that they're a good fit for your book. So, I mean, LinkedIn's really good, isn't it? It's a business networking site. So if you look for publishers on LinkedIn, you will find uh, publishers. Uh, but you just need to do your due, your due diligence. So if you're going to do it the DIY route and you're going to get your own copy editor, your own proofreader and your own designer, mm. just make sure that you go on either word of mouth recommendations or you look at their portfolio to make sure that you know that they're the right person for you. Um, or you just go with the more established um, the more established publishers that you can see that they've got proven track record working in that area. So it's, yeah, it's not difficult to find a publisher, but you just need to make sure that they're the right fit for you. But I think that's the case with everything in business, isn't it? You just need to make sure you're, right, you're working with the right team. You're right. You know, I was talking about the big, big publishers and someone actually commented to me to say that the big, uh, big publishers actually get upwards of 200 manuscripts a day. So they said, we don't have time yeah. to read anything. So unless there is someone who actually helps in putting your manuscript on top, it'll just get lost. So, Yeah, and I, I think the problem as well with a lot of manuscripts is that they're not very good. Not, not that the content isn't good, not that the ideas isn't good. It's just it's not structured, it's not publishable mm. because it's either kind of a stream of consciousness, which is really difficult for a reader to understand and engage with, um, or it's kind of jumbled and you, it, it's just not in the correct format. So at least when you go with a proper publisher, like a hybrid publisher or a traditional publisher, mm. they will help you to format the manuscript so that it is publishable. Because I imagine out of those 200 manuscripts they get a day, probably most of them are not in a publishable format, so they're not going to get read. Mm. So you do need to make sure that when you submit anything, mm. you do it to the publisher's guidelines. Um, and each publisher will have slightly different guidelines as well. Right. So you do need to do your research before you submit anything blind to anyone. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. given all these large platforms like Amazon, etc., who've come in, is self-publishing an option? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you can self-publish. Yeah, there's lots of um, there's lots of ways that you can DIY publish. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's just a case of making sure that you've got the right team mm -hmm. and understanding that you know, much like building a house, mm -hmm. you you are project managing a lot of different moving parts mm. and it's not just a case of writing your book and handing it over you need to be involved in the typesetting like not many people know how to typeset you need to go to a professional typesetter to get that done you'll need a specialist book designer so not just any old graphic designer but a specialist person who specializes in book design mm. um the, the formatting is something that an editor or a copy editor will help you with Mm. Um, but you have to manage that whole process and manage the time scales. Yeah. Um, and so it can be done. Absolutely. It can be done. Um, but you just need to be very aware of what you're getting into um, and making sure that you are able to manage that process. And for most entrepreneurs, that's just not going to happen because they have too much else going on in their business. Absolutely. They just don't want the headache of, of dealing with that. Absolutely. So I have time for two more questions, Victoria. My next question to you is... Uh, Given the multiplicity of interest the younger generation has today, 
Are mm-hmm. millennials and Gen Zs and the younger people reading more or less? God, that's a question, isn't it? I think they're potentially reading more, mm-hmm. but they're potentially reading it in different formats. Uh-huh. So social media, I mean, I know from, because mm-hmm. I still teach one day a week, so I know from my students that mm-hmm. social media for them is a big thing. So they're mm-hmm. constantly on their phones. Um are people buying books and reading books? Yes, I think they are. I think they still are doing that. But there's also audio books um, and different ways to access co- uh, or content. So podcasts, like the podcast that you're doing, um, there are so many podcasts now. So I teach uh, classics um, and a lot of my students will go to, to podcasts or they'll go to YouTube to watch video lectures mm-hmm. rather than reading uh, you know, a book. So, yeah, maybe they're reading less, mm-hmm. uh, but they're certainly accessing content in the same way that they did before, I think. Right. It's just right. perhaps the, the way that that's presented has shifted. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. I think there are yeah. pros and cons of both. I mean, I'm a big fan of a book. I like sitting down with an actual physical book and reading it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really old now, so I'm, <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> a bit old school in that. Okay. And my last question to you. And this is uh, for all our viewers and listeners. What would you say are three lessons you would um, like to share with with all the people on writing and publishing based on your own experience? Okay, so that's another good question. So the, the first thing is you need to think big. Mm-hmm. So my background's in philosophy. So I studied Socrates and Plato and Aristotle and Kant and Locke and all mm-hmm. these guys and it was mostly guys, actually, who mm. were coming up with these incredibly big ideas. Mm. And they really didn't care too much about what other people thought about them. They were just willing to, to delve into their own ideas and to promote them. And I think there's a lot of fear now with social media, especially that your ideas are going to get shot down in flames, that you're going to get trolled or whatever. Mm actually you need to kind of have that sense of self and have that confidence so you think big I think is the first thing so don't be scared to think globally you know Mm -hmm. rather than locally Mm -hmm. um purpose is really important as well so you know all of the philosophers that I'm interested in had a purpose Mm -hmm. you know they had some sort of vision Mm -hmm. um and nowadays most of the entrepreneurs that I work with their purpose is to do with either sustainability or social context, mm-hmm. context or something that's going to change the world in a way yeah. that is good for the world. Mm-hmm. So that's brilliant. So purpose-driven mm-hmm. entrepreneurs are, are just brilliant. There's so many of them now, and they're all shaping the world in a, in a really good way, in a way that governments actually aren't so much. Mm-hmm. So I do think the future of the world is, is safe in the hands of the entrepreneurs that I work with, mm-hmm. more safe than it is in the people that we're voting for in Parliament. Yeah. Um, and I guess the third thing is to share that purpose. Mm-hmm. So have a big idea. Be confident in the purpose that you have. You know, yeah. be be hundred percent behind your purpose, and then to share that in whichever way you can, whether it's by doing podcasts or just networking or talking to people, mm-hmm. educating people, um, because that's going to make the world a better place for everyone, isn't it? Amazing, Amazing. Victoria. On that note, uh, and on. You know, just to repeat the three points you gave us all as guidelines or learnings, think big or think global, have a purpose or a vision and share the purpose and your vision. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for taking the time and talking about your journey as a thought leadership consultant and your amazing kind of uh, things that you are doing about when you're ghostwriting for entrepreneurs and uh, your uh, writing white papers. Thank you again for speaking to me and good luck. Thank you very much, Ash Josh. Thank you for having me and good luck to you too. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.